is the voice of Turkey's English language transmission broadcasting from Ankara. In a daily event, the AM 1230 Toronto ADC and 1545 Oklahoms and in the 49 meter band between from Voice of Turkey. Today, 8th of July 2023, you are listening to the news. Turkey, ready to assume leadership in implementing peace plan, Zelensky. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Saturday that Kyiv wants to implement his country's peace plan and expressed that Turkey is ready to assume leadership in this matter. During the news conference with his Turkish counterpart, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, in Istanbul, following talks, Zelensky thanked Erdogan for his country's hospitality in hosting Ukrainians in Turkey. I am here in Istanbul to thank everyone who wants peace for our country and people, said Zelensky. He expressed he is grateful for Turkey's constant support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Ukrainian president said he and Erdogan discussed the upcoming NATO summit in Lithuania, and he was pleased with statements by Turkish leader about Ukraine deserving NATO membership. Following surprise talks in Czech Republic and Slovakia early Friday, Zelensky arrived in Istanbul for his first official visit to Turkey. Since the start of Russia-Ukraine war that began in February 2022, Turkey and Ukraine signed a memorandum of understanding for strategic industries before the NEVS conference. And President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said early Saturday that Turkey has made the most intense efforts to end the Russia-Ukraine war through talks on the basis of international law. Zelensky visited Turkey on Friday to discuss relations, regional and international issues, including the latest developments in the war the Black Sea Grain Deal and ensuring peace and stability in the Black Sea region. In the world that we will wake up to on the 500th day, the Ukrainian people are defending the territorial integrity and independence of their country. From the moment the danger of conflict began to emerge, we made very effort to prevent war, said Erdogan. Turkey rejected the war since the day tensions turned into a hot conflict, he said. Since the 2014 annexation of Crimea in the violation of international law, we have expressed our support for Ukraine's territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence on the all platform. Ankara will give all kinds of support for the re-establishment of Ukraine, said Erdogan, and he stressed that leading Turkish contracting companies in Ukraine will help in the reconstruction. One of the most important reasons why we look to the future of Ukraine with the confidence is that the Crimean Tatar Turks are fighting with their hearts and minds for the liberation of their country, said Erdogan, as he thanked Zelensky for his efforts to guarantee the rights and the laws of the compatriots and fortifying their autonomy status. 
Turkey expects Sweden to fulfill its pledge under Madrid Memorandum for NATO BIP. Turkey expects Sweden to fulfill its promises made under the last year's Madrid Memorandum for its NATO bid. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said on Friday, citing a pact signed with Turkey, Norway and Sweden at a NATO summit. Speaking at a military graduation ceremony in Istanbul, Erdogan criticized Sweden for embracing terrorists despite its pledge, saying, how can a state that does not distance itself from terrorist organizations contribute to NATO? How can Turkey trust a country where terrorists roam its streets, Erdogan asked. Very few NATO allies have made the contributions to the NATO alliance that Turkey has in the last 71 years, he added, referring to Ankara's long-standing membership in the alliance since 1952. Turkey also boasts NATO's second largest army. Turkish officials have complained of Sweden allowing supporters of terrorists as among its reservations about allowing the country into the alliance. Erdogan remarks come on the eve of the three-day NATO summit in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, which opens a Sunday with some members of alliance openly pushing for Sweden to join the alliance ranks. Turkish leaders, however, have stressed that the security concerns about Sweden are not to be taken lightly and that its membership could go forward when those concerns are satisfied, not before. Finland and Sweden applied NATO membership soon after Russia launched its war in Ukraine, February 2022. Although Turkey approved Finland's membership to NATO, it is waiting for Sweden to abide by the June 2022 trilateral memorandum to address Ankara's security concern. Last fall, Sweden passed an anti-terror law hoping that Turkey would approve Stockholm's bid to join NATO. The new law, effective as of this June, allows authorities to prosecute individuals who support terrorist groups. NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg said Thursday that he will convene a meeting next week with Erdogan and Swedish Prime Minister Olaf Kristalsson. Ex-Swedish Foreign Minister admits we didn't take terrorist threat to Turkey seriously. As the world looks ahead to next week's NATO summit, with Sweden's membership bid in the spotlight, a former Swedish Foreign Minister has admitted that her country failed to take seriously the terrorist threats faced by the longtime member of Turkey. I think that Turkey uh, is seriously exposed to terrorist attacks and other countries, including us are not taking it seriously, said Anne Linde, who served as a Swedish foreign minister for three years until last October. Speaking in a documentary public broadcaster, SVT, aired on Friday, Linde addressed the terrorist group PKK-YPG's financial activities in Sweden, saying that Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has the right to criticize financial resources. This is Erdogan's right to criticize Sweden for not taking the threats by the terrorist organization PKK seriously. July 6th recorded as hottest day in the world. July 6th was marked as the hottest day on the top with the global average temperature of 17.23 centigrade, shortly 63 Fahrenheit, surpassing the previous high of 17.18 centigrade, 62.9 Fahrenheit on July 4th and 5th. According to data shared by the University of Maine in the U.S., global temperatures broke the records three times in a row in the same week. The average air temperature in Antarctica for the week has measured to be 4.5 centigrade, higher than the normal average. Meanwhile, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said it lacks the ability to verify the climate analysis data collected by the University of Maine through the computer simulation. However, it said that the world is going through a hot period due to climate change. UN calls more funding for Palestinians as it assesses meet in Jenin after Israel aids. The UN has urged member states to step up their funding more than 2 million Palestinians as it assesses 
urgent needs after the deadly Israel raid on refugee camp in the occupied West Bank city of Jenin. Due to significant infrastructure damage, the entire camp is without water and some residents have been made homeless, UN Deputy Spokesman Farhan Hart told reporters on Friday. According to our humanitarian partners' assessments, more than 100,000 households have lost their connection to the sewer system. He said that UN will prioritize repairs to water and sewer network in the coming days in addition to provision of emergency food and cash assistance and psychological support especially to children. Mitigating the risk of unexploded ordnance will also be critical, he added. The support these efforts were, we urge member states to step up their funding for the humanitarian response, he said. The UN's humanitarian response plan for the occupied Palestinian territories is just 20% funded. Meanwhile, Lini Hastings, the humanitarian coordinator for the occupied Palestinian territory, also briefed the Security Council on the recent situation in Jenin. The 15-member council held close consultations Friday morning to discuss the deadly Israel raids on Jenin. The Israel army withdrew from Jenin early Wednesday, concluding its largest military operation in the city in more than 20 years. At least 12 Palestinians were killed, including 5 children, and more than 140 were injured in the offensive, according to Palestinian Health Ministry. The raid, which started Monday, has also left a massive trail of destruction across the West Bank city, with dozens of homes vehicles, shops, and utility lines destroyed. And that was the news brought to you by the Voice of Turkey. Goodbye, dear listeners.